episode of HVAC System Design. Uh, my name is Babak and this is the channel of the World of Building Design. Uh, as you remember, in the previous tutorial, uh, we started the Carrier Hab software. We talked about the ventilation uh, calculation and how Carrier Hab uh, decides to make the determination of the ventilation system for different type of occupancy. Uh, so in this tutorial, we would like to focus on the internal load uh, in the space properties in the software of the carrier hap. So as you know, this is a channel where we focus on the HVAC system design techniques and we, uh, we work to understand different type of uh, HVAC system design uh, strategies uh, and, and uh, get the familiarity with different type of systems. So we are right now in the carrier hab uh, environment, working environment, and uh, as you remember, we determined the weather before. Um, for our location, we selected the Toronto, Ontario. This is where I'm located, and I have put that in here. And um, you know that there are some other determination uh, has been set when you set your location in terms of the dry bulb temperature, wet bulb. We reviewed that in the previous tutorial. We can go back. Uh, that I put the link, um, you know, uh, up in this video, so you can go back and review. Uh, and then we started looking into the spaces, <clears throat> and we created a space, one single space. Um, we didn't name it as still as default space, but we reviewed the general tab in the previous tutorial, and we said that okay, we have to provide the the spaces um, average ceiling height, uh, the building weights per. Uh, square footage of the building um, so that we, we decided to leave the medium, um, you know, medium weight per square feet, uh, 70 pounds. Um, and again, the, the important part of this section was that we discussed about uh, outdoor air ventilation requirement. So you have to determine the type of space you have if you're designing, if you're designing a, a gym or you, you're getting a ventilation for a, um, say, um, like a health office or, um, you know, regular office, depending on the type, you have to select from this uh, drop-down menu where uh, it, it's uh, somehow connected to the ASHRAE standard 62.1, where it automatically determines the outdoor air requirement per individuals and also outdoor air requirement per square footage of that type of occupancy. And also we reviewed the equation that is used to determine the outdoor air, um, the total outdoor air per square footage per person, uh, depending on that type of occupancy. I have put the link for the ASHRAE preview in the previous tutorial you can uh, check. I put the link down below. Uh, so in this tutorial, we want to go to the tab of internal load. This is also a very, very important tab. And, and actually, I'm going to create two videos for this tab because, um, you know, I want to be very detailed and specific um, in a sense that, uh, you know, we all understand exactly what kind of information needs to be input into this, um, you know, into, into different tabs when you start a project. The first thing is the overhead lighting. So obviously, the over, overhead lighting is a type of lighting that you have in a space, but the importance is that you have to select out of this uh, overhead lighting type. Um, you have to go through this menu. So the fixture types options that it gives you is recessed unvented, recessed vented, and free hanging. What is the difference between these uh, three type of lighting fixtures? Uh, basically, when you change different type, it um, it changes the type of heat gain or heat that is uh, distributed to the space. For example, if you have a free hanging um, a light fixture, it means that that light fixture um, provides the uh, convective heat and radiant heat, and uh, and the convective heat is absorbed by the air circulation in your space and the um, radiant heat is absorbed by the surrounding surfaces. So if you have a free hanging, uh, ceiling free hanging um, uh, light fixture, 
the radiant heat absorbed by the wall, by the floor, or even by the ceiling, because the ceiling is above where the light fixture is located. And, and as you know, the, the heat transmission uh, to become a load in a building uh, is different from the convection versus radiant. The radiant heat is absorbed by the surrounding, um, you know, would become a load during a time period versus a convective load, which becomes a load right away into the air stream in your room. So, um, or if you have a recessed vented, it means that the, the heat is absorbed by the convective uh, air circulation versus an unvented where um, the entire heat is absorbed in form of radiant. So it is very important to select the right light fixture type uh, in a sense that it would it would impact it would impact uh, you know the load profile because as I said um, the carrier have uh, makes the determination of the load per hours um, throughout the months and year uh, so it creates a yearly load profile for your uh, thermal you know deviation or um, or the heat or cooling load okay so. In the in the other section is basically uh, you have to you have to input the total wattage of your uh, light fixture. So if you have say three lights in a room, three, three light fixture in a room each have say thirty watt uh, of usage. So you have uh, thirty by three ninety watt of usage in here that you put. Um, but you have to apply the ballast multiplier here because uh, normally, um, power is absorbed by the ballast starter device as well as the light fixture. And uh, depending on the ratio of how much uh, power is absorbed by the ballast versus the light fixture, you have to determine a, a factor here. This factor can be um, from 0.1 all the way to 2 um, in, in, in variance. Uh, so, that's what you have to put for the ballast. For this, uh, I have to leave it as, for now, I'll leave it as one. Um, so we, we we say that, okay, we the, the usage are equal. So I'm not changing anything in here. And uh, I'm not going to go through the schedule because I'm going to cover the schedule in another tutorial. It, it's uh, more uh, comprehensive. Uh, and I want to keep every tutorials and the videos uh, fairly short. So. I'm not talking about any of the schedule in this tabs, but that's basically the reference to the time period where uh, over overhead lighting fixtures are in operation. So we have to create a schedule for our overhead lighting fixture. These are very, very important uh, when we determine this because um, depending on the time that the light fixtures operate, uh, it means that how much uh, radiant heat it it uh, you know uh, it it provides to the surrounding and and depending on the time of hours it determines how your load profile will look like. Um, so task lighting is basically um, a different type of light uh, that that are for a specific purpose in a space occupancy, uh, which you need to still. Uh, create a schedule for a specific schedule and the uh, wattage uh, that shows um, how much uh, heat gain that it it contributes to, to to space. Electrical equipment, obviously, if you if you are in a space where there are electrical equipment in it, if you have, for example, if you are in a kitchen that there is um, walk-in freezers or uh, big fridges or or anything like that that can uh, emit uh, heat. And there's a heat gain um, as a result of uh, this kind of equipment. You have to you have to account for all of this equipment and their uh, heat gain. And th this information is based on the wattage, and uh, you can also look into the manufacturer's um, you know catalogs and, and determine that. So basically, all of this have their own schedule. In terms of people, this is basically in reference to the. Uh, number of people that you have in a space and the type of activity they are doing because there are ASHRAE standard if you go to ASHRAE 55 where there is a you know 
um, comfort um, comfort level uh, and uh, occupancy comfort uh, information in there. There are a very you know detailed information about how much the human's body um, emit heat, uh, depending on the condition and their activities, their uh, clothing levels, and and many other uh, factors that are de determined and uh, explained in very detail in that standard. But uh, in the uh, in the carrier app, uh, everything is much simplified and it's very easy for you to use the software to do this calculation. So you basically need to determine the quantity of the people in a space and uh, determine the activity level. For example, if you're designing for an athletic center where there are 20 people and uh, you select athletic in here and you see that all of a sudden you would see the, the sensible heat and latent heat um, you know, emission from human's body uh, is provided here. These are all the consideration that we need to take into account when we design, for example, for a cooling system in a space because all of this heating contributes to the load, internal load of that space. Um, so you see, if I change the athletic, so remember that is 710 sensible, 1090 as a latent. If I change that to a different number, say as a seated at rest, these are changing. So the more activity somebody does, the, the more heat emission you would see from, from the human's body. So that's the you know, analogy behind this. And the schedule, again, depending on the people's schedule, if this office work, you provide the schedule for the office, etc. And obviously, if there are other miscellaneous load, we have to, we have to provide it in here uh, with the same setup and same, um, same arrangement. So I'm going to talk about the schedule in the next tutorial because you have to basically create hourly schedule for different type of heating or uh, over, overhead lighting or task lighting or people's usage of the space. And, uh, and then you select that type of a schedule. Um, and the schedule normally is, as I said, hourly. And then uh, you can create multiple uh, profile of a schedule and apply that to different months of the year, throughout the year. For example, if facility, um, say, operates, um, you know, four hours per day um, during the months of January and February, or it, it operates like 10 hours a day in March and April. So basically you have to create a schedule per day and per month and then apply that throughout the year so that it, you can determine the, the load profile from, uh, from the internal load. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, and we will talk about the schedule of the internal load in the next tutorial. So the, the tutorial of today was about the internal load in the space properties of carrier hab software. So, I would like to, you to give me some examples of uh, the type of task lighting uh, or the type of different equipment load or other load that you think that, that normally uh, might be identified and uh, be used in different spaces and you need to consider in this software. Uh, please write your um, examples and comments uh, under this video. And, and we can discuss that in the next tutorial. Thank you very much again for watching uh, uh, this video and please don't forget to subscribe in this channel of the World of Building Design and press on the notification button below uh, so that you would see the other tutorial as soon as they are posted. Thank you.